Hello, and welcome back to Zim Tutorials for Adobe Animate. I'm Dr. Abstract, and in this tutorial, we're going to continue with dragging objects along a path. Uh, we have been talking about this on the Adobe forums, and in the past version, we showed how to export the path as SVG, bring that SVG into to Flash, make a Zim squiggle from it, and then uh, drag along that squiggle. And that's a two-step process. And Joao Cesar had a great idea to use the SVG exporter made by Grant Skinner some time ago. I think uh, Joao mo may have modified it too. So we're going to use that script to do this all live all at once. Let's see what that would look like. So I go control enter and here we are. And now we can pick that up. And so we didn't have to do any external exporting of SVG and, and so forth. And there it is. And this is a Zim squiggle now, which means that we can pick that up and it still drags along like so. We can also modify the path. So there we just added something to it and we can curve along that. Woo! Isn't that fun? Uh, Zim has, it, it, these these two are equal right now. And if we double click it, then they, be, they can be unequal. So that's called straight, keeps it straight, but uh, not necessarily the same size. Double click it again, and we can make little bumps like that. Okay, great. Wow, yay. Okay, let's see what this looks like in code. So we'll go into the code now. And what have we got on the stage? We've got a circle, uh, an instance name called circle, a movie clip called circle. And here we have a movie clip called path container. So we'll go into the actions. And we're using this SVG exporter here. And we bring that in with the global include. So you may not have done things like this, I don't know. But we're importing this uh, location right here. Or if you want, you can go to that location, which is zimjs.org slash cdn slash svg exporter dot js. Go to that location and download it and include it in your own file directory if you so desire, but you're welcome to keep it pointing out to that. Okay, and heading on back then. That was made by Grant Skinner to be able to convert movie clips and paths from animate into SVG. Uh, okay, so we are identifying our path container. We're calling it target. So that's a reference to our movie clip on the stage that is the path. And that's what we want to pass into the SVG exporter. Down at the bottom as well, we're also going to remove that target. So there we are removing it later. We run the exporter. And what that will give us is, uh, well, we can ask for an SVG property on that ex exporter, exporter to see what the SVG is. Let's have a look. So if I go control enter, well, may as well just use the other one here and F12, we're using F12 to see in the console. Here's the console on the right. And the console has an SVG, which ends starts here, ends there. Inside the SVG are these defs with nothing in it. And then we've got this G right here. If we open up the G, then we've got the uh, path inside that. So there's a path with a D parameter that has the path. This is indeed this uh, right here, this bit. Sorry, I can't seem to select it. That bit uh, is our, what we want to pass into the Zim squiggle. So we need to access this live, which is pretty easy to do. Um, but uh, it's easy to do for me. I've been working with this for <laughs> years and years and years. Uh, it's not easy for everybody to do, but there it is, the export SVG. And what we're doing is asking for the first child's or like children, uh, uh, one actually, not the first one. This will be the second one because when we start counting, starts counting at zero. So let's have a look at here. The children is a list of things. This one, right, right. that one is zero child. The G is one child. So we want to get the children at one. And then inside that, we want to get the path, which is the zero child. So it's a nesting thing, isn't it? In other words, we're going to get the one element first, and then the zero element of that one. And then we can use the get attribute at D, 
because that's the name of the attribute, D. Yay, and what that does is it gets us this path right here, and that's what the Zim squiggle is expecting. So here's the, the Zim squiggle, it's asking for its points, and we're going to use the path data that we got from the SVG. There is another way that we can create blobs and squiggles and other shapes as well from SVG in Zim, and that's down here at the bottom, where you can pass it into an SVG container. That's expecting an SVG string, which means where we would serialize that and convert it to a string. So there's some steps there. And what that does is basically takes, uh, you could have a whole scene of, of stuff and it would convert all to SVG, pass that SVG into blobs and squiggles basically, and make a container filled with blobs and squiggles that are all user editable. All right, so that's another route there. Maybe we can try that out at the end. But usually if we're wanting to animate along a path, we know what the path is. Uh, by the way, to make paths, you can you don't have to bring in SVG. There's also a tool that you can use in Zim to make a path. So here is the Zim file. If we go to the code section and look up libraries, one of the helper things we have down here for various shapes, mind you, if you're using animate, you probably don't need these things. But here's the shape tool that allows you to make shapes like blobs and squiggles here and grab the code. I could pick up that code right there. I can select it all, take that code and put that code right here. And it would make that squiggle that we just saw or the heart or whatever. The heart's actually a blob. A blob looks like this, blob. Otherwise it's the same. Well, mostly the same. Blob doesn't have a thickness. It's got a border thickness. Okay, so there's our path and it's a squiggle. We pass in the data. I've, I've chosen on top colon false because otherwise if we run this now, if we don't do the on top colon false, when I select the blob or the squiggle underneath, then it would um, come up on top. Do you want to see that? <laughs> do you want to see a break? <laughs> Control enter. And now when I select the blob or squiggle, oh, that I just dragged it all. Oh, it didn't come up on top, why not? Oh, I commented out the show controls, which is why I showed the controls to start. <laughs> there you go, that, that's it, showing controls to start. So control enter. And uh, now if I select it, it comes up on top. So you see that, and now it's on top. Yay, <laughs> or boo, I <laughs> guess it would be. All right, uh, the other thing we said is show controls false. So if we wanted to, we could, by default, it just starts with the controls, but I don't really wanna see the controls to start. As a matter of fact, we could, if we wanted to make it completely interactive false, at which point, uh, let's see, show controls false. We wanted that to say show controls false, yes. Okay, and on top false, um, right, I'm gonna comment both these out now. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, we still want the on top false. So if we made it interactive false, control enter, then we can't even interact with it. So there's no point needing the show controls because interactive false will also hide the controls. Okay, so I cannot interact with that squiggle now, which you may want as well. Depends on what you're making. Okay, and we've set the color and the thickness there. You could have possibly got that from the SVG um, by accessing a certain attribute in there, but it's not really worth it, really. We can just specify it ourselves there. The other thing too is when you do this down here, then the SVG container will grab the color and the thickness and the fill and various things like that. All right, so that's our path and we're centering it. We're putting it on the bottom to start too because we're making the path after the movie clips are all made on the stage. It would then come up on top if we didn't put it at the bottom. So that's one way to do it. Control enter if we, if we didn't put it at the bottom then as you can see, it, the, the path is sitting up on top of the movie clip that's in there. Another way to do it is center it on the stage at level zero. That would also work. 
And so there we, it's centered on the stage, but at level zero or layer zero, zero. So that means it's at the very bottom. But I like to use the word bot. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> dot bot. There's also dot top and there's also dot ord. O R D like that. If we say ord one, it would put it it would put it at the bottom and then bring it up one level. So this is a relative level. Put it up one level. If we wanted to, we probably could have said put it down one level or put it down two levels or put it down three levels or something like that. Anyway, those are just some short chainable things that we can do to move the layers about in Zim. Those are Zim functions or methods. All right, so great. And now what we've done is we've Zimified the circle. So that's how we access it, this dot circle, just like we accessed the path container with this dot path container. And we're Zimifying that so that we can do add the Zim methods to it, such as the animate method. And there we are animating the properties we're going to animate as we're animating the path along the path there. And there's other properties that we could do too. That's a circle. Um, but anyway, uh, like color and X and Y and rotation and blah, 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 you know, any property basically. And then we're also setting the drag to true. And that's indeed what is allowing us to drag along that path. You could start this animating automatically. By default, if you, if you add drag true, it means it's it starts off paused to let you drag it, but you could also go pause, animate, false like that, and then it would start off animating, uh, at, at which point you might want to consider looping that, loop colon true, or rewind colon true, uh, and rewind colon true. All right, and that way it would just keep on going back, back, bouncing back and forth. We've shown that in previous tutorials, the last couple of tutorials, that's what we were doing there, but we're not gonna bother in this case, right? And another important thing that we found we needed is if we didn't have this line right here, here's what happens. And we were scratching our head about it. We can drag along the path, that, that looks good. But if we pick up the path and move it, this doesn't go with it. And, and not only that, you know, just do a refresh. If we uh, choose these these ones, it doesn't move with it either. And it's kind of like we're scratching our head going, oh, well, that's odd, why, why is that not working properly? For if we were to do a, a new Zim circle, which looks like this circle, uh, we'll make it 20 and blue, dot add two. So there's a, a Zim circle and then we can do the same animation to it like that. My apologies for my typing here. I, uh, I use an external editor usually and we have things a little bit different. Okay, so you ready? Control enter. There is the, the movie clip sitting on the stage. Here's the Zim circle and it's moving along the lines. But if we pick up the lines, it moves with it just fine. So like I said, we were kind of scratching our head going, hmm, why, um, why is that broken? So it turns out that I guess the solution was, well, delete this. Uncomment. The solution is to stop the circle in its own timeline. So the, it must be being placed back um, into its position. So if we stop, we end up with how we had it before, where we can pick that up and move it about and also pick that up and move it about. Yay! Isn't that amazing? So that hopefully will give you lots of new things that you can do with, um, with your paths and your movie clips. Down below, we had an example right here of serializing. Um, so the SVG that we pass into the container needs to be a string. And this was the technique that, or a technique that we can use to get the SVG to be a string. And then we're just locating that in the middle and we go control enter. And basically it added uh, this path. So that's an SVG path sitting there. 
Um, these, uh, well, okay. So that's an SVG path sitting on top of it, which we don't really need or want at the moment. <laughs> Fun! Not sure why those are leaking through. It looks like they're the wrong type of... Um... So SVG container is quite complicated. Probably what we did with the SVG container is just sort of threw them in with handles going at zero, zero, but I can see a touch of the handles peeking through and I'm not sure why. Okay, so uh, that is another route to go. And note that with the SVG container, we just we just get a container that has SVG in it, at which point the path, the, squig the squiggles made for us is the first thing in that SVG container. So you could get child at zero and that would get the, the squiggle inside there and access it that way. I think it's more precise though to get the path out of the SVG and make a squiggle from that. All right, great, yay! I am Dr. Abstract, and this has been uh, another uh, tutorials for Adobe. Ah, right, I always forget to do this. How do we even get Zim working with this? <laughs> Last breath. Uh, just in case you haven't seen any of the previous tutorials, you know, that might be a good place to start. But you'll note here in the more settings that we have brought in a Zim shim right there. So we're importing right here the Zim shim dot HTML as a template, an HTML JavaScript template. Okay. We also have the, these settings set as well. Center, make responsive and scale too, if if you so desire. I think that's that's the setup anyway. And how do we find that Zim shim template? So that would be back here. And we go to the Zim site at zimjs.com. And under code, right here, code, scroll down. That's normally how we start Zim without animate, just in a, an editor. And that will get your Zim going with the circle. And we would make a new squiggle with a path on it. So no Adobe Animate. But if we want to use Adobe Animate, then we come on down and use the Zim shim right here. So here's the zip file. You would unzip that. And inside that is the Zim shim. And if you want to know more about that, here's the intro to Zim and what it can do in the Zim Shim, as well as a whole bunch more uh, or many more um, tutorials. Yay! And some things to watch out for as well. And also in the Zim Shim is an FLA example, and it's got all sorts of information on what, what Zimify does to a movie clip and things like that. Yay! Okay. That's uh, it's me, Dr. Abstract, and have a great day or night. Come and join us at zimjs.com slash slack or zimjs.com slash discord. We'd be happy to answer any questions or ask in the Adobe forums as well, and we'll try and keep an eye out there. And thanks as well to all of those, all you folks who have been talking about Zim on the Adobe forum. That's that's great. Good to, good that we can be of help. Yeah, cheers.